everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. I am super excited for this video today. We're going to examine the brand new trio of styles for fall 2020 by Gabor. We're gonna take a look at all of them, plus some giveaways, coming up. It's always so exciting when the famous brands come out with their new and fresh seasonal styles. And Gabor this year for fall 2020, they've come out with three that are very different from one another. So there is something for everyone. But first, let's talk about a couple of things. These three styles were sent to me by Hair You Wear, which is the maker of Gabor. For this review today, these were free of charge for me in exchange for a review, and I'm so glad they sent me a variety. They've also sent me some items for giveaway today. So I have three of these beautiful Gabor clutch bags to be giving away today. So it has the Gabor logo on it. It's made of like a, a vinyl material. It's a pearlescent kind of a beige color. It has a fully zipper top with a nice little handle. It's actually pretty deep and wide. I can see you using this as an essential bag for traveling for makeup or essentials. Also, maybe you are looking forward to taking some wigs with you on vacation, and this would be nice to store them in. A lot of times I'll put my wigs, two or three wigs, uh, in a, a gallon plastic bag and kind of squeeze out all the air. It makes them really nice and compressed, and I think they would fit beautifully in this bag, and that would give them some further protection. But isn't that nice? So I have three of these to give away. So be sure to watch the whole video, and then before you leave the video, make sure you go down and enter for this giveaway. If you expand the description box below, you'll find all of the details, including the dates. There will also be a link there to register for the contest through Rafflecopter. And uh, there's only a need to enter one time. I will be pulling all three winners from that same pool of entrants. So my intention is to go through all three styles of the new Gabor releases for fall 2020. Uh, just to give a little bit of review and important information on each, we'll do an outside and inside look at the color, as well as a little bit of styling. So I'm gonna try to fit that in there as well. I hope I don't run too long, but it should be fun. So the one we're going to start with today is called Trending Tresses in the color GL1422 Sandy Blonde. Uh, Trending Tresses is going to hit the sweet spot for you if you enjoy a straight, a long straight style with a fringe bang. Now the Sandy Blonde, this is not the soft shades version of Sandy Blonde, uh, so it does not have a root. And it's a combination of some gold blonde, some medium to light gold blonde with some pale gold blonde highlight. Now trending tresses, that fringe piece is five and a half inches. So that's not going to be, you're not going to be able to wear that straight down, although I think it would be beautiful if you would like to add a full straight across bang to this. It would be super easy to do and look very nice. At five and a half inches, it just kind of sweeps back into the style. This has some exquisite layering. I love how the fringe just kind of feathers back right into those sides. It looks very, very fresh and well done. Now, about the crown and the nape, around 12 inches each, but all in all, it culminates in about an 18 to 19 inch total length. It weighs about five ounces. Now, this is also something new for Gabor, is this cap. So I've never had a center monofilament part cap by Gabor. So maybe they're looking at stretching their muscles and doing something a little different. This cap includes a monofilament part directly down the middle and that runs from the front of the cap all the way back to the crown. There's no lace front, it's just a monofilament part. So you see why I think a straight across bang, if you wanted to put in a shorter fringe or straight across bang, it would be an amazing cap to do that because you get the nice effect of the monofilament on the top um, and you can just shorten that fringe as much as you want because you won't bother a lace front. Now let's talk about this. So I think that it's about an inch to an inch and a half of parting space here. Um, and that really, you really can't deviate from that monofilament when you go to style and part this wig. 
If you are looking to part it all the way back in any other place other than directly on that monofilament, you're going to expose the cap. There's such a nice light density and very little permatease on this cap. Even though they use a nice light cream colored cap for this lighter color, um, you, can, you can see where you really can't part it any other, any other direction. So just make sure that you are parting it from the crown down to almost to the cap line uh, down the middle on the monofilm, but you can uh, definitely play around with the how you divide the hair in the very front. So you're gonna to want to know about permatease. This is extremely light on permatease. This straight style with bangs is to, meant to really have a very slim profile around the head. You're not gonna get any volume in places or much body in this hair. So really, the, the most permatease that you're going to see on this style is at the nape, which is typical, uh, just to give it a little bit of lift right there at the nape. And that really accents the layering and makes it really pretty and feminine. You're not gonna get any lift on the top though. This is kind of just a flat top with very little permatease. You cannot pinch in any volume. So let's go over the highlights for trending tresses. It's a very lightweight, natural density, low permatease, low profile style, long, straight, exquisitely layered with a beautiful fringe bang. The fibers are feathery, fine like silk. You'll see that in the back, it's around 18 to 19 inches. Beautiful layering in the back. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to the next style, but I will be doing a series of side-by-side -side shots so that you can see all three of these styles uh, together, both indoors and outdoors. So next up is a style called Debutante. It's in the color Rusty Auburn, the Shadow Shades version, which is GL2931SS. Uh, I was reading about hairstyles this spring, and I can't quote the source, but I remember reading that the shag style is gonna come back in this fall in a very big way, and I think we've been seeing that. And most hairstyles have some elements of shag if they have layering and so forth, but this is a true a knockoff of the old-fashioned shag style cuts. It's just been updated a little bit and the cap features are unbelievable on this style. Let's get into this rusty auburn. I think this is a beautiful red and I'm so glad that they sent me a nice variety of colors. So this red is more like a medium auburn and then it has some light ginger or copperish highlights going through and then you have the medium brown root. That root transitions so nicely in there. Again, it's a soft shades color, so you will see a more gentle transition from the root into the main body of the color, and I think it's well, well done on this one. So let's take a look at the dimensions on this shag. I really love the front. It's a four and a half inch bang area, and I, I can always tell how that's going to work on me because the editor's pick, which is my favorite Raquel Welch style, uh, has a four and a half inch bang. So right out of the box, I just played with a little bit, found my part, and uh, just kind of put my fingers in and picked and fluff a little bit to give it some lift there at the front. This has no problem getting some lift. This is a true voluminous shaggy style cut. But overall, it's about 11 to 12 inches from the crown to the tip of the hair in the back and weighs about 3.2 ounces. So yet again, there are some new and unique features on this cap. I don't think I've seen a cap like this from Gabor. So it features a temple to temple lace front and then what they call a hand tied top, open wefted sides and back. Now the hand tied top, they're not going so far as to say that it's a monofilament top because technically it's not. Um, but what it is, it's a nice mesh material that they've hand knotted each, each of those fibers in and it really gives a nice illusion of scalp similar to a monofilament top. And actually, I really like this effect because it's a very soft two-ply material, um, very bendable and pliable and extremely comfortable to wear. So in, in some ways, it's probably better 
than your traditional monofilament. But let's take a look at the lace fronts. So the, the Gabor lace fronts, like the Raquel Welch, I just find that they're always very nicely done. This one has a beautiful contour. The highlight color is brought right up to that lace front. There's nice fine fiber there, sewn in beautifully for the most natural look. So that lace front is amazing. And then of course you could, you could part it anywhere you want on the top and take full advantage of that hand tied top. So let's dig into this shag style cut. Um, it's a very traditional style shag. It goes from short almost to medium length. A lot of volume, a lot of layers. So you really wanna get in there with your, your fingers and just sort of pick and fluff, bring air into the layering and set it free. Um, that motion will really bring out the true movement and grain of these uh, layers. So what you'll see though is that the layering kind of want to move, kind of wants to come in towards the face. You see this a lot on the shags and then you've got that uh, proverbial flip at the bottom and a little flippies all over actually. But that's a pretty st sturdy flip there at the bottom. You've all seen styles like this. So what you want to know about this kind of a shag construction is that a lot of the volume is gonna be created on the sides. So sometimes you can get a volume at the crown and then it's a little more slim profile around the sides and at the temples. It's exactly the opposite on this. So the crown is a little bit more flat and then the layering begins to sweep forward from that crown area. You're going to see big volume on the sides and at the temples. Okay, that's just how it is meant to be. Now you can get um, you can get a little bit of a slimmer look out of it if you tuck it behind the ear. It's really cute, but you're really not going to get a bump it right at the crown. Now the volume is supported by permatease. There is a ton of permatease on this style. If you are permatease averse, you probably don't want to. Uh, experiment much with this because you're going to see a thick, pillowy, heavy, matted permities on the sides, right above the ear, all the way up to uh, that top piece um, at the crown, most heavy at the back and at the nape. It just, it feels like um, a solid piece of permities right there at the nape. And it's easy to see why, because the volume is going to be more in those areas of the permatease. So let's do a quick highlight of this style. It's more of a short to mid-length, uh, uh, old-fashioned kind of traditional shag style cut. It has a beautiful lace front and hand-tied top is then machine wefted sides and back. It has the traditional movement and style design as a classic shag style and it has a ton of volume and permities. So this is the third in the trilogy of brand new styles by Gabor for fall 2020. This one is called Shape Up. It's in the color Sugared Nickel which is GL4466 SS. See what I mean? They sent me a nice variety of colors. I'm just missing a brunette in there somewhere. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful gray shade. Um, if you have never experienced this before, this color sugared nickel starts with like a deep charcoal, which is more like a, a just a, kind of a, a deep powdery gray color. And then it has some medium gray in there and then some white highlights running through. Those white highlights really come across silver on this. And then it does have a little bit of a darker root. So it, it does look like a rooted gray, and it kind of has the appeal of a fashion color. Shape Up is a short textured pixie style cut, but it has a little bit of a twist. So about three and a half inches on the bang area, about three and a half inches off of the crown, and then a three inch nape. Now this is a completely open cap style, so there's no lace or monofilament here. So I took this out of the box and gave it a shake and put it on and I tried to find a part. 
and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get a part to tape. And I, I now I figured out why. So the top and the front are very heavily texturized. I mean, they have taken down this fiber so much that there's really no body left in it. Now that's not a bad thing. That is uh, the identity of this style. They're going for that textured look on the top. So when I tried to find a part, these fibers just kind of wanted to spring right back up there. Now I have this piece only. I don't have any other pieces to compare it to, so I'm just giving you uh, the information that I know to be true on this piece. So this is really meant to be more of a textured look on the top. Now on the in the back, so you've got a cute little profile here at three and a half inches. And then the back is kind of wavy. Actually, the front and the back are more of a wavy. So it's kind of like you have just a nice, thick, wavy head of hair and you've got a haircut. When it, that pixie starts to grow out a little bit, it starts to do a little bit of an under curl here and there. And that's really what you're getting. So if you take a look at this nape, it has little bends and waves in it. So it's not completely straight like we see most often in a tapered nape. It's got some bends and waves. It's a little bit longer. And then you will also see a little bit of bends here at the, um, at the sides and the front. So the, um, the temple area, it just kind of coils under a little bit. So it's gonna be difficult to kind of get a backward sweeping movement on that because they're just gonna stick up because they're really meant to bend under. So sometimes you just gotta go with the style. It looks much better when you are, are not expecting it to do things that it can't do. So what I did was I just took my fingers and kind of swirled in around the hairline to get those fibers to just kind of curl in and obscure the hairline a bit and then just pumped up any volume here on the sides, scoop behind the ear, and then set the nape so that you can really get a good look at the waves in the back. I'm not trying to make those straight. So the big thing here is the level of permatease. There's a thick mat of permatease that runs from the top back to the crown. Now that permatease is strategic because it does cover up the wefts on this open cap very nicely. Um, and it allows you to get levels of volume that you might not get without it. So you can really pinch in that permatease and get some spiky, trendy looks out of this on the top. Now there's basically very little permatease at the back and none at the nape on this piece um, because it's supposed to be a little bit of a slimmer profile in that way. But like I said, right there on top, it's just there's more permatease than there is actual uh, hair fiber. I would recommend maybe a, a darker shade or a soft shades on this color because I really don't know that if it was a true uh, light color like an unrooted blonde or gray, if you could see down into the permatease or not. So as I mentioned, it is an open cap and it weighs about three ounces. It's super lightweight, extremely easy to wear. It's just a literal uh, kind of plug and chug style as I like to say. And I think due to the waviness and the unique texture on the top, you can do a lot of it, a lot in terms of styling. So let's go over the highlights of this. This is a short, heavily texturized, heavily permatized pixie style cut. Um, it's a little unique because it is so heavily texturized and spiky on the top, but in the back, it's a little more smooth and wavy. I think that is the characteristic of this style that you have to love permatease and you have to like that spiky look as well as a wavy nape. Mm -hmm.